Uh, paste relative references. Whoops. Click inside first, then paste relative references, and then dot .fbx. So now if we middle mouse click over here and evaluate that, we can see it's creating LOD0. If I switch this to 1, now it's creating LOD1. So all you need to do to write out all the levels of detail is set your switch here, save to disk, go up one, save to disk, up one, save to disk. So now we have all those FBXs there, perfect. Now one important thing I forgot to do is to create some UVs for the leaves. So just go into your LOD0 here, UV project, initialize, alt drag this, initialize, alt drag, initialize. So now if I UV quick shade and visualize that, we've got nice clean UVs and we can see in the UV viewport that they're perfectly 0 to 1. Sorry about that, um, but what you can do is you can just copy these over in here to each of the load levels really quickly. So, sorry about that inconvenience. But yeah, that's should be everything that we need to do within Houdini. Now let's jump over to Unreal. Now let's also go to the branches and just fix the UVs here because by default they get super stretched out. So if we go UV viewport, let's yep, set them to be that and scale to match the surface area. That will be um, okay because I'm not using a texture, it doesn't matter. I just need to have clean UVs. Okay, cool. Here I am in Unreal. I've just created a blank project. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. All right. So one thing I wanna do is go to project settings, type in, um, or no. distance fields, so generate mesh distance fields and we're going to have to restart for that uh, but I think we should also go um, dynamic lighting no not dynamic um, static so I think it's under allow static lighting I think Yes, so let's uncheck this so that um, there will be no light maps, uh, no lighting built or anything like that, and light maps won't be used because it's going to be purely dynamic. So let's restart, just save it. Okay, it'll take a little bit of time to uh, reboot Unreal and recompile all the shaders and stuff, so I'll let that sit for a while. Okay, so let's set up some folders first for our um, our assets. So we'll go meshes, create another folder for materials, and one more folder for textures. All right, cool. Okay, so let's go let's go to textures. I'll import um, the leaf texture that I'll be using. It's quite a simple texture just drawn in Photoshop um, using like the paint splatter thing. Uh, again, this technique uh, Dragos Matt Fosky um, shared on Twitter. This texture and all of the other source files will be available for uh, adventurer tier of patrons or higher and I'll put it on Gumroad as well. But this texture you can just sort of draw some shapes in Photoshop. Then on that we've also got to set it to not have MIP maps because otherwise it will create some sort of 
um, tearing at the borders uh, at far distances, especially if you're scaling the UVs. So in remit maps, um, which if it's a small texture, it's fine. That won't cause issues really. Okay, to import the meshes, let's import just lot zero, open, import. Okay, that's fine. We can just go open that up and now we can create our LODs in here. So, as you can see, the triangle count is pretty good for this, uh, this amount of detail that we're going to get. Then let's go to LOD import, import LOD level 1, just go to the same place. select lot 1 yep then import lot level 2 lot 2 and of course you can create as many as you want and rather than putting it in a lot group to do the uh, screen size stuff let's say custom And, and then let's search auto compute load distances, turn this off, and we can set up the load distance as ourselves. So since they're all checked on, that means we can edit them all. So screen size for load one, let's see when that kicks in. You can see the screen size up here. 0.75 is pretty close for it to change. Uh, let's maybe make it sort of 0.35 maybe, let's see, 0.35 and then of course the other one will need to change to be around like 0.125, something like that. So yeah, there we go, that works. The transitions are pretty good. Once we have the shader on them, um, they'll be pretty difficult to see. Cool. Now let's go create the material for the uh, branches here, or the bark. New material, let's just call it bark, go in, make a constant, plug this into roughness, name this roughness, or rough, whatever you want to call it. Let's make the default value of 1. Base color, let's go vector parameter, call it color. Let's make the default a brown, a dark brown, there we go, apply that, now we can create an instance of that, select this tree and then drag this to replace the branches material and that'll do for now, I'm happy with the colour of that. Now let's create the leaves, let's create the leaves. So another material, call it leaves. Now let's dive inside. This will be a bit more of a complex material, but not too complex. So let's drop a texture, um, text, text parameter. All right, let's call this uh, leaf text. Cool, cool. And let's just take the alpha of that, um, plug it into our opacity mask. We've got to change our blend mode to masked so that um, it's just either 0 or 1 in our opacity. Let's go base color. Let's create a vector parameter, call it color. Of course, that makes sense. Now let's multiply this by constant and let's name this emissive amount so the leaf um, if you want can be partially emissive and that sort of helps with the softness as well I find and let's plug that into emissive color so if the emissive amount is zero of course it'll be zero but a value of one will be 100% emissive 